This is part 28 of Angular 6 tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to populate a form array with existing data. Let's understand this with an example. At the moment, when we edit an employee, we're only displaying his personal information like full name, contact preference, email, etc. Now notice the ID of the employee that we are currently editing is 2. And if we take a look at the data returned for this employee by our REST API, in addition to the personal information, we also have the skills data. But at the moment, we're not displaying these skills on our employee form. And remember, within our employee form, skills is a form array. So what we want to do is bind these existing skills to the form array. And once we are done, we want the employee form to look like this with the existing skills so the end user can edit and save them. To achieve this, we're going to modify the implementation of this edit employee method. Notice at the moment, we're using patch value method to display employees full name, contact preference, email, etc. In our employee form, skills is a form array. We can see that in ng on init. Notice here, skills is a form array. To bind existing data to form controls like full name, email, contact preference, etc., we use patch value. But to bind existing data to a form array, we use set control method. So on the employee form, instead of using patch value, we use set control method. We use this method to replace an existing control. In our case, the control that we want to replace is the skills form array. So the first parameter to this method is the name of the control that we want to replace. In our case, the name is skills. The second parameter to this method is the new skills form array with which we want to replace the existing skills form array. For that, I'm going to call a separate method. I'm going to name it set existing skills. We don't have this method yet. We'll create it in just a bit. So now to this new method that we are at to create, we need to pass all the existing employee skills. For that, remember, on this employee object that's coming into this method as an input parameter, we have got skills property and that skills property is an array of skills. Notice skills is an array of I skill objects. So let's pass all these skills to this new method that we are at to create. Now let's go ahead and create this new method. This method is going to have one parameter. I'm going to name it skill sets and the type is I skill array. And the return type of this method is a form array. Now, here is the important bit to understand. What does this skills form array actually contain? Well, if we take a look at ng on init one more time, notice this is a form array. And within the form array, we are calling this add skill form group method every time we click this button. And if we take a look at what this method returns, it returns a form group. and the form group contains three form controls, skill name, experience in years, and proficiency. So in our case, skills is a form array of form groups, and each form group contains those three form controls, skill name, experience in years, and proficiency. So what we want to do inside this method is create a new form array. I'm going to name it form array. and loop through each skill we have in this iSkill array. For that, let's use for each. As we are looping through each skill object, we want to create a skill form group. For that, we're going to make use of form builder. Form builder is already injected into this component class using the constructor. So let's use this form builder group method and create a skill form group. So this dot form builder dot group, the group method returns a new form group. Within this form group, we want three form controls, that is skill name, experience in years, and proficiency. First, let's create the skill name form control. The value for this is going to come from this skill object that we are currently iterating over. Notice when I press dot, we see all the three properties. So the value for skill name form control is going to come from skill name property. Similarly, experience in years. And finally, proficiency. 
So for every skill object that we have in this iSkill array, we are creating a form group. Now what we want to do is push all these form groups into this form array and then return that form array from this method. So to push a form group into a form array, we use push method. So all that is left right now is to return this form array. Notice at the moment we are editing employee with ID2 and if we take a look at this employee within our REST API, notice he has got three skills and we see all these three skills on this employee form in addition to his personal information. Now one very important point to keep in mind is when we programmatically change the values of form controls, form groups or form arrays, the status flags like dirty, touched, pristine, etc. does not change. Let me actually show you what I mean in action. Notice these two properties of our employee form, touched and dirty, they are false. Now even when I delete one of these skill groups from the skills form array by clicking this button, notice those two properties are still false. This is because the state properties like dirty, touched, etc. are designed to indicate if the user has interacted with the form. By interaction, we mean manually touching these form controls and changing their values. In our case, when we click this button, we are programmatically removing the form group from the form array. Remember, the key bit to understand here is when we click the button, the change to the form array is happening programmatically and not manually. So by default, a programmatic change to a value of a form control, form group or a form array will not flip the value of these status properties like dirty, touched, etc. In our case, we have actually removed some of the existing skills of this employee with ID2. So it actually makes more sense to mark this employee form touched and dirty. We can do that programmatically. When the delete skill button is clicked, this is the method that is called. So in this method, in addition to removing the skill group from this skills form array, we want to mark this form array as touched and dirty. For that, we need to refactor this code. We are going to reference the skills form array from our employee form several times. So let's store it in a separate constant. I'm going to name the constant skills form array. Now the first thing that we want to do is from the skills form array, we want to remove the skill group. Once that is done, we want to mark the skills form array as touched and dirty. Notice when I type the letter M on the skills form array, we see several methods to mark this form array as dirty, pending, pristine, touched, untouched. Now we want to mark it as dirty and touched. Notice on the initial page load, both these properties are false. When we delete one of the employee skills by clicking this button, both the property values are flipped to true as expected. That's it in this video. Thank you for watching and have a great day.